Hey, what's up everybody? Who is ready for a thriller of a free response? I know, I've been waiting all day for this. Copper has two naturally occurring isotopes. Information about the two isotopes is shown in the table below. Ooh. Part A. Will the average atomic mass of copper be closer to 63 AMU or 65 AMU? Explain. All right, so this part is really do you understand the idea of weighted averages? Our answer, the average atomic mass will be closer to 63 AMU because this isotope of copper has a larger percent abundance. Boom, 69.17% to 30.83. And as you recall weighted averages, the average will be closer to that species or isotope in this case with the larger abundance. Ooh, one point done. Part B. Show a numerical setup for calculating the average atomic mass of copper. All right, so this is not on your formula chart and it's a pretty good idea to know how to do weighted averages considering that's how we figure out your grade for this class. So it's just the mass of the first isotope, 62.93 times its percent abundance, which is 0 0.6917. Don't forget, when working with those percentages, move your decimal two places. Add to that the mass of the second isotope, 64.93 times its percent abundance of 0 0.3083. Boom! Calculator time! 62.93 times 0.6917, close parentheses, plus parentheses, 64.93 times 0 0.3083, close parentheses, answer. What do you know? 63.5466. And if we're using sig figs, 63.55 AMU. Boom. Notice that our answer supports part A. 63.55 is closer to 63 than it is to 65. Use that as a guide to help you determine whether or not you got the correct answer. All right, let's keep this party rolling. It says, Copper can be used for water pipes in homes. When the pipes corrode, copper atoms oxidize to form copper 2 plus ions in the water. A homeowner has a water quality report prepared for a 250 milliliter sample of water taken from pipes in the home. To determine the concentration of Cu2 plus ions, a water quality analyst adds a carbonate solution in excess to precipitate all of the copper 2 plus ions as copper 2 carbonate. According to the report, 6.75 milligrams of copper 2 carbonate precipitate is collected from the 250 milliliter sample. Assume that the only ion that will precipitate in the water sample is copper 2 plus. <sighs> what a thrilling problem this is. Real life? Oh my gosh. <sighs> Part C. In the box below, draw two water molecules showing the orientation of each water molecule toward the copper 2 plus ion. Okay, because I'm fancy, I'm just gonna drag my water molecules. It's important that you orient your water molecules as I have, where the negative ends of the water molecules, the oxygen ends, are facing that positively charged copper two ion. Point. Moving right along, part D. Would you predict the Coulombic attractions between water molecules and potassium ions another ion commonly found in tap water to be stronger than, weaker than, or equal to the attraction between water molecules and copper two ions. Explain. Okay, let's first answer the question. Stronger than, weaker than, or equal to. The Coulombic attractions between water and potassium ions would be weaker than Whoa, did you see how I just answered the question there? The Coulombic attractions between water and copper two ions. Boom. Okay, we've answered it, but now we need to explain. Think about Coulomb's law. The strength of attraction is predicted by the magnitude or size of the charge of the particles and the distance between the particles. The potassium ion has a 
smaller charge and a larger radius compared to copper to plus and will therefore experience weaker coulombic attractions with agua. <gasps> Is this English class or what? Ooh, and that brings us to part E, which says calculate the following for the 6.75 times 10 to the minus one milligrams of copper two carbonate precipitate. Subpart I, moles of copper ions. Now, you wanna be jumping for joy anytime you get a really nice mole conversion problem on the free response. Just make sure to always show your work even though I know that you know how to do it in your brain. All right, start us off here with 6.75 times 10 to the minus one milligrams. First thing I wanna do is convert that milligrams to grams using the relationship that for every one gram, there are a thousand milligrams. My next step is to convert those grams to moles. Now, we're working with copper carbonate here. For every one mole of copper carbonate, the mass is 123.56 grams. How did I know that? One, I'm a nomenclature genius, and I practice my nomenclature every night to come up with this formula, CuCO3. I then head to my trusty periodic table and add together the mass of one copper, one carbon, and three oxygen. My final step, is to convert from moles of copper carbonate to moles of copper two ion. What is the relationship between copper carbonate and copper two? Well, for every one of these copper carbonates, there is one copper two ion. So however many moles of copper carbonate I have, it's the same number of moles of copper two. Let's head to our trusty calculator. Six, four, seven, five, seven, e. Negative one, close parentheses, divide by 1,000. Enter, divide by 123.56, enter. Times one divided by one gets me to 5.46 times 10 to the minus six moles of copper to ions. Boom. Subpart II, moles of carbonate ions. Should be on a roll here. We're still gonna use that 6.75 times 10 to the minus one milligrams of copper two carbonate. Again, we're gonna first convert milligrams to grams using the following relationship. Then we're gonna to convert to moles of copper carbonate, again using the molar mass, which is 123.56 grams. This time we're thinking about the moles of carbonate ions. So again, as I compare copper to carbonate to carbonate, the ratio is one to one. So I'm not even gonna use my calculator because I know from subpart I what the answer is. It's 5.46 times 10 to the minus six moles of carbonate ions. And that makes sense. The two answers should be the same because as you think about copper to carbonate and its formula, the ratio between copper and carbonate ions is one to one. So those numbers should be the same. Math. All right, moving right along to subpart I, 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 moles of carbon atoms. Well, we just determined in subpart I, I that we have 5.46 times 10 to the minus six moles of carbonate ions. And if we know how many moles of carbonate ions, we can determine the number of moles of carbon. Because what is the relationship between moles of carbon and moles of carbonate? It's a one to one relationship. So we know that we also have 5.46 times 10 to the minus six moles of carbon. Wow, what a fantastic free response. Getting points for just multiplying things by one. Then we get to part IB. For those of you who were not alive 2,000 years ago, that means four. Now we're looking for moles of oxygen atoms. So we are going to once again start with our 5.46 times 10 to the minus six moles of carbonate. But here is the doozy. 
as you think about the relationship between moles of carbonate and moles of oxygen, that relationship is not one to one. For every one carbonate, there are three oxygen. So we need to multiply that value by three. And we end up with 1.64 times 10 to the minus five moles of oxygen. Boom. Now stop and think for a moment. This number is three times this number. Our number of moles of oxygen is three times the number of moles of carbon, which makes sense because in carbonate, the ratio is one to three. Ah! If you're having trouble with that, just estimate. I know scientific notation can be crazy difficult. Let's just do five times 10 to the minus six. What would this number be if we multiplied it by three? Well, three times five is 15 times 10 to the minus six, or in correct scientific notation, that would be 1.5 times 10 to the minus five. Three times this number. Always fall back on those magical math estimation skills to help you give you a sense of whether or not you're on the right track. All right, and that brings us to part F for fantastic. What is the concentration of copper two plus ions in the homeowner's water supply? When you say concentration, I think molarity, which is a relationship between the moles and volume in liters of a solution. Now we're looking for copper two ions we know the number of moles of copper two ions in the sample because we solved for it in an earlier part, 5.46 times 10 to the minus six. Boom. And our volume in liters also given to us earlier in the problem. Check it out. College board just giving answers away. 250 milliliters or 0 0.250 liters. Quick jump to my calculator. My concentration is 2.18 times 10 to the minus five molar. Boom. Brings us down to the final part of this free response question. The maximum safe level of copper two plus in the water supply set by the Environmental Protection Agency also known as the EPA, is 2.05 times 10 to the minus two molar. Does the homeowner's water supply have a concentration of copper two plus ions that is greater than, less than, or equal to the safe level set by the EPA? The homeowner's water supply has a concentration of copper two plus ions that is less than the safe level set by the EPA. How do I know that? 2.18 times 10 to the minus five is less than 2.05 times 10 to the... This is one of those questions where it's easy to make a mistake. Scientific notation with those negative numbers can be kind of tricky. 10 to the negative five is smaller than 10 to the negative two. And we are done.